My name's Bianca. I'm a designer maker. I also work as part of Studio Meraki. This week's art kit includes materials and ideas for learning how to weave. So I've got a couple of examples here. This is a little wall hanging that I made with some nice tassels on the bottom. And this one was made by my six-year-old daughter. She decided she didn't want to hang it on the wall. She wanted to make it into a little rug for some of her toys. Let's take a look at what we need for our weaving project and what you will find inside your art kit bag if you've received one. So we've got a nice piece of strong rectangular cardboard, some different colours of wool. We've also got a ruler which is really important and useful for lots of things. But From previous week's art kits, you should also have your scissors and a pencil. It really helps as well for this if you can find another pencil somewhere. So you've got two. I'll show you what those are needed for a little bit later. You can also find some extra things around your house that you might be able to weave with. So if you're lucky enough to have a good craft stash, you could use strips of fabric or perhaps ribbons, bits of colorful string. But actually, if you take a look at your plastic waste, you can use things like this bubble wrap, cut into nice strips, that makes a great material for weaving with. Also colourful plastic bags cut into strips, different widths, different colours. There's a nice red one there. And actually my personal favourite is this netting that comes off oranges and other fruit. So if you turn the plastic inside out and take your scissors and cut the netting off the plastic oops out come the oranges at both ends then let's just get those out of the way eat them later delicious you end up with a nice loop like this. If you just take your scissors and cut it in one place, then you've got a lovely long piece of this nice textured netting. You can put that in your weaving too. The first thing to do is to mark your notches along either end of your piece of card to hold the thread which goes up and down, which is also called your warp thread. So on your piece of card, you want to make sure that you look for the ends with the holes, that the corrugated lines are running top to bottom. This means that the card is nice and strong and can hold your warp threads without bending. So we take our ruler and we want to make a series of marks one centimetre away from each end. So the first thing we want to do is to draw a line a centimetre away from the edge. Mark in a couple of places and then join them up using your ruler and your pencil. A centimetre back on one end and then on the other. Okay, and then you need to divide this line into one centimetre intervals. So use your ruler and make a quick little mark at each centimetre to the end. That's worked out quite nicely. And the same on the other end. Make sure you can see all these marks. And then we're going to take our scissors and cut in from the end. Be careful to keep your fingers well out the way. 
roughly down to the line that you marked across. So you've got all these little cuts in the end. This is going to be a weaving board. You can use this again and again. If you get really into this, you can find a bigger piece of cardboard, make a bigger weaving. It's really easy to do. All those little notches are cut in. So we've got little splits all along the end of each piece of card. This is to hold your wool. It's time to thread up our little weaving board or loom. So what you need to do is take a ball of wool Pop it through the end of it, through the first notch along one end Oops. and to tie it in a good knot. There we go. And then we're going to thread this thread up and down the front of the board. So we go all the way down and then loop around the next notch and then bring it back the other way. And keep on doing this all the way across the board. So these are the threads which you're going to weave through. It kind of helps if you, when you come through to the back, pop a finger in and then pull it through the next notch. So your threads are coming up and down the front. So the front's looking like this and the back you can just see the little bits of wool going around the back of those little notches. So keep on going, keep the threads quite nice and tight and then you're weaving should stay together well and you get to the last one. Just take your scissors, snip off the wool. And tie another knot. Make sure it's a double one so it doesn't come undone. And then you're ready to start weaving probably snip those off so they don't get in the way. So I've got lots of different materials that I could use for my weaving. Some which came in the art kit and then some which I found at home and cut into strips. But I'm probably not going to use all of these. In fact, I think I'm going to choose yellows, oranges, a bit of blue. And I also really like the silvery and the bubble wrap. So I'm just going to take away the materials that I'm not using. Just think about what your favourite colours are or colours you think go nicely together. And before we start weaving, it really helps if you take your two pencils and slide them. This is easier to do right in the middle of the board. Slide them right underneath the threads and then pull them up to either end. So what this does is holds the threads off the board so that you've got some space to get behind them when you're weaving under and over. So I'm going to use this one first. And with the wool, because they're quite big, chunky, balls of wool. It's quite good to maybe take a small piece, perhaps just wrap some around your fingers and snip it off. So it's easier for you to pass this under and over the threads. So to make a start, tie your coloured wool onto the warp thread at one side. 
Use. And then what you're going to do is to feed it under and over these threads alternately. If you remember, these are called your warp threads. This thread, which goes across the warp threads, is called the weft. Easy way to remember that, somebody told me, is that the weft goes from right to left. So let's get going. You can sort of pull one thread up as it goes under and then take it over the next one. Under and over. Under and over. Under and over. All the way across. Definitely helps to pull up on the threads that you're going under. And there we go. That's your first line across the board. And now the next bit is the bit that's really important to remember. So on your next row, you're going to go do the opposite to the first row. So you go where you've gone over, you come under and then over the next one and under, over and under. Oh, and actually at this point, I find it really helpful to turn the board around. So I'm moving my hand in the direction that feels most comfortable. Under, over, under and over. All the way back across to the other side. So if you look at these threads together, you can see that they are doing the opposite thing. And this is what holds a weaving together when the threads go under and over and then in the opposite way on the way back. And so now you just continue, always remembering to look at the line, the last line that you did, the last row, and make sure that the one that you're doing now is go going the opposite of the one you did last, under and over. Oops, turn my board around again. And then we just keep on going. This can be a really nice relaxing thing to do once you've got the hang of it. In each row, when you've done it, push it up and then go round and start going back the other way. So it does take a little while with the wool to build up your weaving. It looks really lovely. It's a really nice texture. So let's tie this off on the end. So I think next I'm going to choose this bubble wrap, which is quite different to weaving wool, but the principle is the same. You just tie your strip of bubble wrap around the end thread on one side, the end of your bubble wrap. Remind yourself, so that one, I went under it last time, so I'm going to go over. And then that should set me up nicely for the rest of the row, under, over. There we go. Keep on. Going. And when you get to the end, pull it through. So you'll notice that these.
bits of recycled plastic build up your weaving much quicker than the wool because they're thicker and wider. Just keep bunching them up so your weaving's nice and tight. I think this one will do three side to side rows. Oops, pop. <laughs> Can be a little bit tricky to tie off at the end. That's really good practice. So there we are. What I'm going to do is actually have another piece of that because I'd quite like to have a nice wide piece of bubble wrap. So I went last. That one I was slightly tricky to see with the see-through but I went over that one last so at the start of the row you always really need to study which one which way you went last time so I'm going to go under and over and then tie it off again and then we just carry on with the other materials that we've got until we're happy with our weaving. Towards the end, it gets a little bit tricky to get underneath the threads with the pencil there. So what I've done on this end is just taken the pencil out, and slid it back in underneath where I've already woven so that I can just weave this last row here, which is quite close to the end. You can always finish it a bit sooner if you're finding it a bit tricky. But this is a really good way to get the last row done. Just bring the pencil a bit closer if we need to. last warp thread or last row of weaving so we'll just tie that off on the end like we've done with all the other ones sometimes this plastic can be a little bit tricky but just take your time now that we've finished weaving all our threads it's time to finish it off 
So first of all, we're going to snip off all of these long ends where we tied our threads just to neaten it up at the sides. You'll still have a little bit sticking out. And now we're ready to take it off of our board or loom. So take the pencils out first. And then what's actually really helpful is to take one of your pencils and use it to slip the threads off the ends of those little cardboard tabs. And it's quite tricky to do just with your fingers. The first edge is always the trickiest and then you can actually just take it and carefully pull each one off the board. You still need to secure these little end threads. So actually, what's happened here is my plastic bag has already slid down a bit to that end. So I'm going to push the whole weaving in that direction just a little bit. And then I'm going to take my wooden knitting needle, or you could use a stick if you find one out on one of your walks or in your garden, and just thread it through the loops at the top of your weaving. So I'm going to hang this one up. If you wanted to do what my daughter did and make it into a little rug then you could just tie all these off into little knots and then I'm going to just cut a piece of this nice blue wool so I'm going to cut a strip let's see I'm mean, about 30 centimeters long so about two of your rulers. You can measure that out or you can just estimate it. And then I'm going to tie it round each end of the knitting needle, either side of the threads to make a little hanging loop. Like this. And then you can hang that up. And now I'm just going to do one last finishing touch, which is to make a couple of tassels to go here on the bottom of your weaving. They make it look really nice, but they also give it a bit of weight. So when you hang it up, it hangs nicely. So to make my tassels, I'm going to need my scissors, my ruler, a ball of wool, and four pieces of wool, which I've cut to roughly 15 centimeters in length. That's the length of your ruler. So, first thing I'm going to do is take the wool and the ruler and holding the wool at the top end of the ruler, wind it all the way round and back down again and just wind it, oops, you kind of have to catch the end and squish it under the next bit of wool. It doesn't come off. The first few are tricky, a bit tricky, and then once that's on there, nice and sturdy, you can.
and just wind it and wind it and wind it all the way around. Now this is really easy to do with wool like this, but you can also do it if you wanted to make bigger tassels. You could use a piece of cardboard or a book to wind your wool around. So now I think I've got just about enough wool on there. I've been gone around a good few times. The more wool you get around your ruler, the fatter your tassels will be. And so I'm just going to snip it off at the end. And then I'm going to take one of my shorter pieces of wool that I cut earlier and pass it under the wool and over the ruler and then pull it up to one end like that. Now I'm making two tassels from this. If you wanted to just make long tassels, you could just use this for one and just tie up one end of it. But I'm going to make two. So I'm going to put the wool through in the middle, over the ruler, under the wool, another one of those little sections, and put it up to the other end of the ruler. And then I'm going to tie both of those off really securely and tightly. Oops. Okay, so that will is well secured now. And you can take it off the ruler. So it looks sort of like this. So the next thing to do is to tie the tops of the tassels. This is slightly tricky. It might be good if you have another pair of hands to help. But I'm sure with perseverance you could probably do it on your own. So underneath one end, taking these top two, kind of like a little pair of bunny ears, I'm putting them, oops, put your, one of your leftover pieces of 15 centimetre wool underneath where you've tied it together and then tie it around so you're sort of bunching the top of the wool mm -hmm. together. And pull it up a little bit more want to make a slightly smaller bubble on your tassel and then you just tie it round in a double knot mm -hmm. there we go we'll do the same on the other end so lay your wool across place your tassel over Get it in the right place and when you're happy with it. Tie it nice and tight. Is snip our tassel piece in half to make two. So take your scissors and just cut through the middle of the well. There we go. Now you might need to tidy up the ends a bit. They're a little bit uneven. You can just snip them off, like giving them a little haircut. There we are. There's one. thread there. I think that was from the original winding of the wool. Let's get rid of those bits. And then we're just going to tie these onto the bottom of our weaving. So just find those loops that went around 
your weaving board tie your tassels on with the little bits that are sticking out from the top. Then we're just going to snip these off as well, make it look nice and tidy. A bit sticking out the bottom of that tassel. Tidy that up. And there you have it. A beautiful hand woven weaving. it all now with tassels on the bottom that you can hang on your wall and we'd love to see what you all make and what lovely inventive ideas you come up with for ways to use your weavings